So I have a question. In this world, what can one million dollars buy you? The answer is obviously quite a lot, and you could also buy a heap of these one million dollar novelty notes, but what about five dollars Australian? You could buy a cheap wired mouse from the reject shop, you could possibly buy a cool t-shirt from Kmart, or alternatively you could just go to Macca's and buy a small double cheeseburger meal, and this five dollar note will allow you to do that. However, for a whole five dollars, I managed to purchase a generic, unbranded welcome phone from my local flea market. Greetings everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's one, this is a follow-up from a video that I'd done quite a while back where I bought an unbranded generic phone at my local flea market for $2. It's linked up here if you want to see it. I don't really recall the specs or if we even found a brand name of that or not. It was so long ago. But this video is pretty much the same premise. I went to my local flea market, I found a cheap phone, bought it, and we're going to have a look at it today. So going to my local flea market early on a Sunday morning, I don't expect to find much, but I had some optimism of finding something cool. And eventually I stumbled across a guy just putting miscellaneous electronics on a table. And usually miscellaneous electronics stop me in my tracks and I go straight over and have a look. And he was putting out some old laptops, some DVD players and stuff like that, and then he had a small little box. And in this box was a bunch of phones. So I just sifted through those phones and I seen the phone we're going to have a look at today. I picked it up and I initially thought that it was a brand name phone until I looked at the back and seen that there was no brand name. And I asked the guy, how much for this? And he turns around and goes, oh, is that the Huawei? And I went, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. And he goes, oh, the SIM cards don't work. Uh, you can have that one for $5. So I handed over a $5 note. I grabbed my phone, put it in my backpack, came back home, charged it up, and I've left it since. And here it is. This is it here, the Huawei P30 Pro. A while ago, actually a few years ago, I did a Huawei P30 Pro clone from Wish Video. I'll link that up here as well. That's a very, very old video and is pretty terrible, but that was one of my first videos that actually got quite a lot of views and turned my channel from reviewing sneakers to technology, which I am very thankful for that happening. Taking a look around this phone, we've got a water drop notch with our little tiny camera in there. If I do a premiere for this video, feel free to chat amongst yourselves about what specs you think are gonna be in this. But otherwise at the top, we've just got our earpiece grill and that is it. The bottom has a bit of a chin, but it isn't half bad and the bezels going around it aren't that bad either. Pretty much when I seen this phone in the box, there was a phone just on top of it like that. So I only seen this little bit here and I kind of thought it may have been an Oppo or something like that. And then I picked it up and I felt the sides of it and that's why it felt premium because the entire frame is made of metal. So it actually has a bit of weight to it and is actually pretty solidly built. Ow. But obviously we have no brand names, no nothing. I know that this is a welcome device because I have powered it up, but that is all I have done. And on the back, we can see our quad camera configuration just there with our uh, eight megapixel, no, five megapixel, no, two megapixel maybe, maybe two megapixel, I don't know. And then we have our dud camera and our periscope camera <laughs> and then our uh, other dud camera just there as well as likely a single LED flash just under there. On the side, we have our volume rockers as well as our power button, which does have a bit of a red accent to it, sort of like the real Huawei P30 Pro. And I'll show you that in a second. The bottom has a speaker grill as well as the Type-C USB port. We have some antenna bands and we have the microphone situated just there. On the other side, it is all plain. And at the top of the phone, we have the SIM tray area. And as you can see, the SIM tray and the frame have taken a bit of damage. And as the guy told me, it's not reading SIM cards. So I'll just take that out. There it is there. So we'll put a SIM card and a micro SD card in here and see what happens. I haven't tried it as of yet. I've left all the testing and having a look at this phone for when I start recording because I genuinely have no idea what the features of this phone are, what OS this is running, anything like that. I have no idea at this point in time. Construction wise, the frame is metal, the back is glass and the front is glass. So it's quite premium. Unlike the first P30 Pro clone that I looked at where you could just take the battery out of it, this one has the back glass cover sealed down. Now back in that video also, I did not own a P30 Pro. I now own a P30 Pro and I can actually show you the differences between the two. So starting with the cameras, it's uh, kind of close. I mean, it's got the same sort of shapes and stuff going around there, but our periscope camera is just a dud one there. They've actually put a little square around it to give you the illusion that it's uh, more than what it is. Good job, guys. Amazing. The colors are exactly the same, though. They've done really well on that. 
And also, I did look this up on Wish to see if they were still selling the P30 Pro, but unfortunately not. They're selling the P40 and P43 and P50 and all that sort of thing. So unfortunately, this is uh, long gone. So I don't think anyone's going to be wanting to buy this anytime soon. At the bottom of the real one, the SIM tray is down the bottom, but on the clone, it is at the top. Both have USB Type-C, which is good, and the speaker grills seem to be in the same place. Antenna bands are relocated from the center on the real one to the sides on the Faco one. Now, as I said about the power buttons, here is the real P30 Pro, and you can see the little red accent just going along there. And on the clone, it's painted on the inside rather than the outside. When we tear this down, I'll get a better look at it. I guess they tried, so let's give Welcome some credit. And at the top of the real one, we've got our IR blaster as well as a secondary microphone. And on the Faco one, nothing but the SIM tray, and that is it. Now, the P30 Pro clone that I have here is in pretty good condition. My actual P30 Pro itself has cracked glass, and the tempered glass protector that's on it is also cracked. The reason why I put a tempered glass protector on here is because there's glass missing and the OLED is unprotected by anything, so I just decided to sort of throw this on, and hopefully it doesn't cause any more damage. But putting the two side by side, yeah, there's a big difference, obviously. So without further ado, let's power up both these phones at exactly the same time, and just see which one boots up first. That was a bit late to the party. This will bring back memories. Well, the Huawei made its usual jingle, and the Welcome made the Boot Audio 3 jingle. Good to hear that again. But, uh, there you go. There they both are side by side. The bezel sizes on the real one, obviously, are uh, pretty minimal, whereas the Faco one, you can clearly see. But just having a look at the icons and stuff, they're kind of pretty close. The wallpaper is exactly the same. I can definitely see the differences from the OLED to this LCD, that's for sure. What do settings look like? Oh god, okay. I think you kind of get the idea of what the real P30 Pro looks like in comparison to the clone. At least I was able to show you this time around, unlike the previous video. So I'll leave this to the side and we can come back to this if we need it. So let's put a SIM card and an SD card in this phone and see what happens. If we do get a signal or something like that, I doubt it would be 4G. I mean, we've never had a Welcome device with 4G, but hey, this could be a first. Okay, 4G up the top. This came out before the whole 5G thing on every welcome phone was a craze. So 4G is what it says there. But it seems to be okay, I think. Let me give this a call and see what happens. There we go. All right, yeah, that works. Testing, yeah, that works too. There's nothing, nothing wrong with this, this as far as, as, far as I can tell. tell. It receives, it receives calls. calls. So, so, I have no, I have no idea, idea what the guy was talking about, there you go. Also, also this, this is the mock quality, quality on the P30 Pro clone. clone. Alright, well in that case, I have no idea what he was talking about. Calls are fine on this. So let's go ahead and take a look through his phone, see what's installed by default. So we've got calendar, clock, video, settings, gallery, play store, the usual face lock there, contacts, phone, messaging, browser, camera, scrolling along, or swiping along, backup and, that is it, calculator, downloads, email, Facebook file manager, flashlight, FM radio, Google, music, sound recorder, and WhatsApp. Then swiping down, damaged SD card, the SD card may be damaged. Try reformatting it. I might just see if it comes up in file manager, hang on. Oh, it didn't. Okay. Oh, we've got 128 gigs of available storage on here. Probably, what, 8 gig, maybe? I'll just try another SD card in here and see if this one works, because that may be the problem with it. Instead of SIM cards, it may be memory cards. We'll see. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, so it's not the SD card, so I'll put my old one back in and see if it works. I just tried my micro SD card and it's all working, so I'm not too sure what's going on here. Better read the other one that I put into it, so we'll just leave it for now. Uh, but we do have a magazine unlock which is kind of cool. But anyway, swiping down from the top, we have some fairly basic options here. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data connection, audio profiles, auto rotate, airplane mode, location, flashlight, and hotspot. We've got to try the torch. Come on. Let's see how good the torch is. Well, um, let's try the real P30 Pro. P30 Pro clone? Real P30 Pro. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a difference. All right, touching and holding on the main screen. Does that bring up anything? So we've got wallpaper widgets and launcher settings. Screen page switch effect. Oh, there's a, okay, let's just do random. There we go. So now we just, we, oh, oh, look at, oh, look at it go. 
Wee. That's fun. A little bit laggy, but uh, that's kind of cool. I'll just leave it to do random animations. That's fine. I guess we could take a look at the wallpapers now. So I've got that one there, which is stolen off the P30 Pro. That one, which is also stolen off the P30 Pro. Same with that one. Same with that one. Same with probably that one, that one, that one. It just goes on and on and on, doesn't it? There we go. And also, I will get the system files off this and upload it to Mega and put a link down in the description below so you can go through the files of this phone if you want to. I'll make sure I do that before I tear this down so then, in case I kill it, I can harvest the system files off it because people are interested in looking through the system files of these random generic phones. All right, so let's jump into settings and have a look through this really messy looking settings. Actually, what was this on last time? Was it the S30 Pro Plus Ultra thing that I last looked at? I'm not too sure, but it looks like it. Wireless and networks, here we go. So we've got Wi-Fi, SIM cards, data usage, and more. Let's go to more. We'll go to cellular networks. It says preferred network type, but we'll see if it shows just 3G or if it shows both 3G and 4G. If this does have 4G, it'll be a first, but I highly doubt it. And there we go, 3G and 3G. Unfortunately, this is not going to be the first Vulcan device with 4G. I was going to say, we may as well just switch it down to 3G, but uh, we can't really do anything. Okay, that's fine, we'll just leave that. In device connection, Bluetooth and printing, that's it. Okay, so apps and notifications, we've got the list of applications installed on this phone. So we'll go ahead and just have a scroll through here. You folks will probably point something out, but I'll just sort of quickly, oh, he's cheeky. Hey. He was on the last one, this little blue android dude who's looking just a little bit cheeky. Face unlock, face lock, ooh. Fingerprint, fingerprint test, Oh, hello, okay. Uh, Google account manager, Google Play services, location, MTK Android stuff, yep, okay. Phoenix, Oh, isn't that malware? I think it is, we should run a virus test if we can. Setting, storage, shining light, oh god, shining light. Can't wait to see that one. Lollipop. There we go. So it's Android 5. There you go. We know what's going on now. But uh, if you've seen anything in there, let me know. Uh, but it all looks pretty usual for a welcome device anyways. Power saving mode and battery usage. Approximately an hour and 14 minutes left. So battery wise in this, it's probably going to be what? 2000 milliamp hours, maybe. Uh, in display, we have the wallpapers, which we do have live wallpapers. Oh, they're just the default ones, that's okay. Pick wallpaper, we've already gone through here. They're all stolen off the P30 Pro. Lock random wallpaper. Yes, well that's on, we've already tested it. Brightness level, always on display. Well, may as well put that on, see what that looks like. Okay, well, does the job. Shining light, ah, there we go. Shining lights here. You know what, we're just gonna have that on. So when we get to the speaker test, it'll light up like a Christmas tree. Font size, when the device is rotated and the G sensor calibrate. Yeah, it's about fine. Sound, what do we have in the sound enhancement department? We have everything here, best order and best loudest and best surround with lossless BT mode also included. Man, it's good to see you all back here again. It's been a while actually, since I've seen best order and best surround on a welcome phone, it's only just been one in there. Uh, ringtone wise, what have we got? Flutie phone was the default one, yeah, okay. All these ringtones are gonna be included in the all the ringtones are going to be included in the system files that I've pulled from this phone, so feel free to go through them and tell me if there's any in there that have been custom put on, or if they're all just default ones. Notification and status bar. Notification management. Okay, so you can say what notifications you want to bother you or not. So let's do face lock, don't bother me. Uh, priority, it's fine. Allow notification bar and lock screen. I guess we'll leave that as well. Uh, storage, we know that it has 128 gigabytes supposedly of internal storage. We'll see when we get to testing it. In security and privacy, we've got everything here. So we've got fingerprint here. Fingerprint management. Oh, what did it say up there? It said something. I don't know what it said. Uh, we'll set a pin of just one, two, three, four, because why not? One, two, three, four, that'll do. All right, let's try the fingerprint scanner. We have to confirm the pin again. Okay. There you go, one, two, three, four. All right, touch screen fingerprint on. Please enter the fingerprint positive. Yes, we've heard this one before. Uh, let me just. Yep, there you go, pretty good. How fast is it? What about a fist bump unlock? Thumbs up to that one. We can do the face unlock while we're here as well. About face unlock, look at your phone to unlock it. All the usual stuff, we'll set it up. Uh, find an indoor spot, not too bright or not too dim. It's fine, we'll just look at it silly as we always do. 
Fail to open camera. Okay, let's pretend we didn't see that then. We'll just have a look through the rest of security, unknown sources, we may as well enable that. Uh, everything else looks pretty much usual. User and accounts, I will do that later on. We've got Smart Assistant next with accessibility, high touch and motion control. How many are going to be actually in here? Oh, there you go. So we've got accessibility, all the usual stuff. Smart Awakening. So these gestures sometimes work for me and sometimes don't work for me. So double click to wake. All right. Okay. Now it's said to draw a C. There you go. So if I go draw O, there you go. Will the cameras actually open? There we go. Is the front camera actually working then? It is. So why didn't face lock work then? Maybe you've got to go into it manually and do it instead of going through settings? Oh, now it works. Okay, let's see if face unlock works. Yep. Yeah, that works. And the edge screen, I guess we can put on. We'll see if anything comes up during testing. And finally, system. We've got about phone. Model number, P30 Pro. We have the build number just listed there. Actually, in build number, it's welcome branded there with 540 by 1140. So that's probably the screen resolution right there. The custom version, Android 9.1, but we know it's Lollipop. Well, we can actually test that. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Uh, you can change the colors with the tap, and you can move the rings by tapping and swiping. Long pressing the logo doesn't do anything. Oh, maybe it does now? Not too sure about that, but we know it's Lollipop, so that's all good. The security patch level is 2017. Man, that feels like a century ago. Baseband version, kernel version, the status, and we've got our serial number here, which is the classic 01234567898 ABCDEF. Actually, was there no wireless updates? There was not. That's unusual for it not to have anything. It says system update in here. And then that's it. Well, at this point, I'm going to connect to Wi-Fi. Wait for it. Wait for it. This always happens. There we go. It wasn't as loud as usual. Standard keyboard installed there as well. Not frozen keyboard, which is good, I guess, because I've never got to use the frozen keyboard. But anyways, we're connected to Wi-Fi. The battery's draining fairly fast. I'll go back in the system and see if it says anything now. Probably not. No, nothing. We've got no way to update this. Well, I think what we'll do now is go into the camera, because I don't know the resolution of the front camera or the back camera. I've got no clue. Do we have autofocus? It does the autofocus, but it doesn't appear to be actually autofocusing. Uh, we've got HDR, we've got flash on, the scene modes at the top. We'll go into settings, all looking generic here. 16 megapixels. Well, that's kind of generous, I suppose. And the video is going to be at fine quality. The front camera is 8 megapixels. So not 64 megapixels or 48 megapixels or 100 million rear cameras as we're used to. So it all looks fairly generic in here. It's going to be pulling off some fairly basic shots with this. Before we jump into the camera test, I found the edge stuff. There's this little tiny thing just here and you just swipe and there you go. You can add your shortcuts there. I wonder once we start installing applications if they'll actually come up in there. I just pressed the settings cog and it's brought up this, which kind of looks like Samsung. That's okay. You'll get to see it all in the files. Okay, now let me go ahead and take some photos and videos with this and we will be back. Okay, testing video quality on the $5 P30 Pro clone. It's a bit weird. It's got the portrait mode going on permanently. So you can see the Frogo there, but it's blurred to the sides and it's really laggy and it's probably 640 by 480. Uh, can I autofocus? If I tap on the screen, it makes everything go dark, but I don't think autofocus is actually happening though. No stabilization whatsoever. 
going along the brick wall just to see any details. Stuart's just burning in the sun just there. I'll try and focus on him. Oh, I guess focusing kind of does work. Kind of. We have lemons there at the bottom of the lemon tree. We have some in there, but uh, it needs to be cut back just a little bit. Hopefully that'll be soon. And the far away aircon. We need to name this. It's called Breeze Air at the moment, but we need a proper name. So if you have any ideas, let me know. I actually just found out the AIS is actually on for the rear camera as well as the front camera, which has a lot of jelly movement. Can we autofocus? No, we can't autofocus. I mean, the rear camera barely autofocuses anyways. The photos with this aren't exactly the best, but for five bucks, it'll do. There you go, I have the flash on now. Can you see Ripley any better? And flop. You like this camera? No? Yes? I got your belly. I got your belly. Boo. You want to be the star of the show, don't you? Yes, you do. Well, you've seen the photos and videos, so I guess we should have a look at them in detail. I think this is probably 2 megapixel, maybe. There's just a portrait effect going on with the camera in both photo and video. It's just blurred all around the edges, and this is with HDR on as well. I mean, it's okay, I guess. It's not the best, but for basic stuff it will do. But back in the day when this was sold on Wish and AliExpress and all that sort of thing, uh, yeah, no, this wouldn't have been good. But then again, when has a camera on a welcome phone ever been good? Actually, a couple of times, I think, but it doesn't matter. And Stuart is looking a little something like that. So, yeah, and the video mode's not the best either. But at least the LED flash on the back makes a tiny little difference in the dark. That's kind of good, I guess. But anyways, there you go. That was that. Let's move on. I've had time to try out my main micro SD card in this, and it just will not read. I rebooted the device with the SD card in there, and it just refused to actually boot back up. It booted up to a black screen, and that was it. So I grabbed the files off it, put it onto here, and we should be all good. We'll go ahead and just start opening all the apps up, as per usual. So calendar looks like a calendar. <laughs> it's never going to change. The clock looks like a clock. Videos. Shows the videos that I took with this thing. Settings, we've been through. Gallery, shows the photos that I took with this thing. Play Store, we haven't signed into a Gmail account. We need to sign into a Gmail account. Let's do that now. Okay, I've signed into a random Gmail on this phone, so I'll open Play Store again. And there we go. So let's search for the usual apps. So let's do Call of Duty first. Because this will tell us if we have less than 2 gigs of RAM or not. And nothing. So it's going to likely be one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, but we can try Minecraft. That's always fun. I think we'll do Minecraft Trial, GTA 3, and Crazy Taxi. That sounds good. All right, they're going to be installing the background, so we'll just leave them for now. Face lock, we've already been into. It works. It's taken a photo of my face. I just shot up to my face and it unlocks. Easy done. Contacts will be all the contacts that were on the SIM card that I've now taken out. Phone dialer, nothing new here. Messages is gonna look like messages, nothing new there either. The browser, however, is going to be, wait for it. So because I have a Gmail on here, opening up the browser signs me into my Gmail on this and now my Gmail signed into the browser. I don't know. Let's just type in P30 Pro clone and see if I come up on Google. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, there I am. I did come up on Google. That's kind of cool. Uh, when was that? 2019. Man, that was a long time ago. But anyways, um, the browser works. It's a little bit laggy, but at least it works. We've got the apps installing in the background, so we'll continue on. Uh, backup and restore, which just crashed on me, and that's okay. Oh, it said please insert SD card. Oh, that's okay then. Wait, no. Why would I have to insert an SD card when it's got 120 gigs of storage on here? It doesn't matter. Uh, calculator looks like a calculator. 2 plus 2 equals 4 minus 1. That's 3 quick maths. That wasn't really quick. In downloads, there is nothing. Email is just email. Facebook is going to want us to sign into Facebook, which we're not going to do. File manager. I guess we could install the apps that we do need to test on this device. So I might go ahead and install them now. I can also tell you while this is installing that the battery life is pretty terrible on this. Uh, just by taking a couple of photos and stuff, it dropped about 12%, I think. And then I charged it up for a little bit and then it just started dropping at a reasonable pace. Just watch the percentage at the top and once you get through most of this review, we'll see what it's at. 
Okay, well at this point in time everything's installed so we'll keep going along. We have the flashlight which we've already tested, but I'll just test it again. There you go, look how bright it is. FM radio, do we need to plug in headphones? We can't plug in headphones because we don't have a headphone jack on here, but we can use an adapter. So I've got a type C to 3.5 mil. And it sounds like the radio from Silent Hill. You know, when the monsters are approaching and the radio goes like that, that's basically what it's doing. Uh, my headphones are just playing static. And that's all that's doing. So probably this isn't acting as a proper antenna or something. I have no idea. Also the edge thing. Since I've installed a bunch of apps, I want to see if I can add. I can. You can add your own custom applications there and launch them if you want. Since I've installed a whole bunch of them, I could assign them there. But it's all good. We'll leave it. Google will open Google. That's no surprise there whatsoever. Uh, music. We can do the speaker test now. It should show BFG Division right here. We're going to leave all the enhancements off, just leave it as stock, standard, no nonsense. We'll play this at full ball, see what it gets to. Don't expect this to sound fantastic. It'll probably sound like absolute garbage, but that's okay. This was only five bucks, man. Oh yeah, edge lighting. Ah, uh, yep. Good stuff. One hundred three point nine, we got to, which is a bit higher than usual. It didn't sound horrible. It didn't sound good. Let's just sum it up to: it's basically the same speaker that we've heard on other welcome devices, except this one's about 0.7 percent better than the rest of them. Sound recorder is next, but I think you get an idea of the microphones from the camera test. Finally, we have WhatsApp, which will want me to sign in, and I'll just leave it. Let's try the gaming test then. Let's start with Minecraft first, and see how that performs. Without even getting into the gaming test, I can tell you now that, oh, the torch is still on. That's probably why it's a bit warm, I was going to say. It's getting a bit warm on the back here for some reason. Yeah, that's probably why. Whoops, my bad. Fix that problem. Still, it's pretty warm down the bottom as well. So, sort of there, and then up to what, mainly up there, where the motherboard's going to be situated. It's pretty laggy just on the title screen there, but let's create a world. See how it goes. Finally. That took a little bit of time, but here we go. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and walk around then. Yeah, it's a little bit laggy. A couple of frame dips here and there. But uh, it works. It's playable. But I'm really thinking MT6580 and 1 gig at this point in time. I'll just fall and break my ankles as usual. Yeah, I think you get the idea with Minecraft. It works. It's reasonable. It will run. But let's hop onto Crazy Taxi and see how that runs. Sega. Today I'm 21. Alright, the sound's off. We'll choose arcade mode. Play by arcade rules. Let it load. Pick axle. Let's go ahead and start driving around. Hey. Wee. Yeah, that's actually good. Nope. Never mind, spoke too soon. Uh, oh wait, hang on. This is just an ad pop up out of nowhere. Okay. That's completely fine. That's the first time that's ever happened. Anyways, it's actually running fairly smooth to be fairly honest. So we know that it's slightly better than a Dreamcast at this point. That's sort of the benchmark that we're trying to achieve here. If Crazy Taxi ran fine on a 1999 gaming console, and if it doesn't run on a phone that was made in 2017 or something like that, then there's a serious problem. But otherwise, no, this is fine. I haven't picked up a customer. Uh, flipping my car, sort of. Nope, that's fine. Oh, I've actually never shown the results screen on here. Uh, I failed. I'll just go on to GTA 3 then. All right, putting everything up to absolute maximum. Let's see how GTA 3 runs. If it can run on a... 2021 feature phone, rugged phone thing, the AGM M7, and it should run on this, shouldn't it? Wait for it, wait for it, and Banshee. Oh, looks a little laggy. Might be alright. Can relate to your brother. Yep, there we go. Maybe this could be lingering on 2 gigs of RAM. The Call of Duty didn't come up on the Play Store. And if I install it manually, it will probably end up in the purple screen as per usual. 
Uh, but no, this works. This works quite well. Okay, well, I wish I could try some more games on here because this is quite fine. I think we might have to check the specs to see really what's going on here because I'm starting to get a bit impatient here and I just want to see the specs of this. More so the false specifications of what this would have been advertised as. So I'll go ahead and open Antutu because we could do the multi-touch in here and it usually shows the false specs in here. Antutu has never really been correct in the past. Well, this version anyways is a really old version it's from 2016, so we'll see what it says. All right, well, there it is. The brand is Android. P30 Pro, 9.1, 10 core processor, Mali 400 MP, as per usual. 1080p display, 5 megapixel camera, 6 gigabytes of RAM, hey? The internal storage, 10 core processor, uh, multi touch, 5 point multi touch, woof. Quality, 5 megapixel rear camera, 2 megapixel front camera, battery is now at 69%. Yep, the Android SDK version is 28, Android 9.1, but we know it's Lollipop, so we'll just leave that. Not a lot of sensors supported, only a couple there. Let's truly see the specifications. Go device info. Device info hardware, actually. Oh, there you go. Well, I was wrong. This usually does show the correct specs of the phone, but this does say that it's an Android P30 Pro with an MTK6592. We do have the flash module just listed there. I have a feeling we're gonna to have to rip the shielding off the motherboard to have a proper look at that. Go along, 10 core processor, sure thing. The refresh rate for the screen is not 60 hertz, it is 69.7 hertz. That's an improvement. Okay, memory is one gigabyte, and the internal storage is 16 gigabytes. The cameras, uh, 16 megapixel back and eight meg, yeah, no, that's not correct at all. Uh, battery, 4,800 milliamp hour. That's not the case, I can tell you that. Thermal, what are we at? 43 degrees on some areas, 44 degrees. It's not too bad. It's still a bit warm at the back. Uh, sensors, got three of them in total, and that's pretty much it. So we'll open the last application to see the specifications. Hopefully it shows the true display resolution and the processor, P30 Pro, hardware MT6592. Okay, now, well, it says Lollipop there. Surely this has to be an MT6580. It can't be an MT6592 in here. Uh, but the total RAM is 1 gig, and the screen is, yeah, probably correct. The 540 by 1140 or whatever it said in the settings is probably about correct, actually. So for the display, though, it's not half bad. I also just realized right now that I didn't do the YouTube test, but I think I know how it would have ran. Just as a guess, it probably would have ran at 480p, and it probably would have been meh. But the display on this isn't... I mean, we'll just have a quick look at it again. The colours don't look half bad, honestly. It is an IPS LCD that they've put on here. Otherwise, the refresh rate is the same in here. Battery, yes. Well, that's good. Doesn't show the capacity, thermal, sensors, cameras, 5 megapixel back, and it just stopped working. <laughs> oh, that's good. So what, 5 megapixel back and 2 megapixel front? That seems about correct. I would have said 2 and 0 0.3, but that would have just been... Never mind. You know what? That's okay. I'm going to go through some other applications to see if we can really see the system on chip that's in here. Okay, I installed Droid Info. I can see where it says Build Fingerprint 6580. So I'm going to just assume that it's the MT6580 in here, but once we tear it down, we'll get a better look. Uh, but it says MT6592 just there. Quad core. There's supposed to be 10 cores. Memory, 1 gig, 16 gig. Camera, 5 megapixel and 2 megapixel. I think we get the whole idea of what's going on with this device now. So I guess the conclusion with the $5 unbranded generic welcome phone that I found at my flea market, it's actually not too bad. For 5 bucks anyways, it's not bad. But back in the day when this was selling for like 130 bucks or something like that, absolutely no. I'd tell everyone to stay away from this. But since they found this at a market for 5 bucks, it takes photos, it receives calls, it plays games. You know, it's not too bad. But it's probably not worth any more than $5, though, that's the only thing. I'd honestly say the best thing about this is the display, honestly. And the system's performance isn't that bad either. For one gig and a quad core, it is fairly reasonable for what it is. Um, but once you have the animations going, it's kind of a little bit laggy. But I think you get the main idea of this. It's just another welcome device. Pretty much the same thing that I looked at a couple of years ago, just 
in a different build and that's pretty much it. So the question is, if you found a welcome device at your flea market and the person selling it only asked for $5 for it, would you buy it or would you leave it? Would you just walk away and leave it there? It could turn out to be a really, really good welcome device, which is unlikely, but you never know though. You never know. So I think that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and rip this apart and see what the guts of this look like. And also, don't worry, I'm going to be pulling all the system files off this before I do the teardown because I want to make sure I preserve them. Bye-bye. Oh, I've got it on mute, uh, but it does make the brute audio noise when you switch it off. Well, it's all factory. Let me go ahead and pull the system files off it, and we'll start the teardown. I'll switch it off now with the sound on so you get to hear. Classic. All right, the system files have been pulled off this device successfully. It came to 1.10 gigabytes, but I'll put that in an archive and upload it to Mega. It should be maybe 600 meg, 700 meg, something like that. Uh, but yeah, feel free to go through it and let me know if you find anything. Since this has a glass back, and since I'm too lazy to use heat, I'm just going to pull it up, like so. Put my pry tool underneath there, and use some cardstock to just slice away without a care in the world. And we should begin. There we go. Oh, yep. Look at all the cutouts on there. Oh boy, yep, this is a reused one for sure. But there's the battery there, which is a CXDKA366073P. I will look that up and see if it comes up with anything. But otherwise, there's a sticker just there. What does that sticker say? 1 plus 16, just on the end there. So that pretty much confirms it. But of course, we'll keep tearing this down to see the CPU and stuff. But this frame, you can see where a fingerprint sensor would have sat on. All the cameras cut out there for multiple devices where the camera needed to be there or there or there or there or wherever. The manufacturing date of this is August 2019. So it's a couple of months off being two years old. Anyways, let's pull this apart and have a look at it. So the loudspeaker is soldered directly onto the USB charging board. It does have some waterproof mesh on it, which is kind of interesting to see. And there we go. There's the whole assembly just there, just like so. The little microphone just hanging on for dear life just there. If we lift up the battery, we can see the underscreen fingerprint scanner right there. Just imagine that it's sitting right there. I'll put the battery back down. All right, I'll take off the top plastics. Only four screws just holding it down and that's it. Nothing interesting there. So I'll put that with the rest of the parts. But now things are getting a little interesting because what is that just there? Is that a place for another camera to sit maybe? I don't know, but I'll go ahead and just take all the flex ribbons out. We'll take off the rear camera, which has the LED attached to the flex ribbon. We have the code there. I will look this up and see if it comes up with anything, just to confirm if it's a five megapixel one or two megapixel or who knows what it is. The front camera is this tiny little one just here and there's the codes on there just like so. Once again, I'll Google this and see if it comes up with anything. Taking out all the screws, pulling out the volume and power button flex, the earpiece and everything, it all just comes away just like so. You can see how much they've chopped up just there to get this motherboard to fit in there. But yeah, you can see all of this is all metal. I'll probably pull the screen off it just for no particular reason. But uh, there you go, there's the motherboard there. Just go up for a bit of a close up. The 6th of June, 2019 is when the motherboard was manufactured on, according to the code that's printed on there. The battery is in its own little sort of contraption here, but there's no codes underneath there and just the flex ribbon for the motherboard to the charging port is just underneath there. So I'll just leave that on there. All right, well, we've got the shielding here. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip this off in a very uh, safe manner. And uh, we'll see if this still works after doing that. But it'll be interesting to see what chips are under here. Okay, with that being removed, what do we got there? As always, sad, but it was to be expected. And the flash module is just there, which I think it did show in one of the spec apps. It did show the flash module code on there, so I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same. Unfortunately, this $5 welcome phone doesn't have the best specs, but it was definitely worth a look because you just never know. This could have had 4G. It could have had 2 gigabytes of RAM. It could have had a slightly higher processor than the MT6580. You just never know. So this is actually a first for a welcome phone. The screen wasn't held down by adhesive. It was actually held down by a number of clips that go around it to hold it into the metal frame, which is actually quite hefty. Yeah, instead of adhesive, they just clipped it down into place. Screen replacements are gonna be easy for it then. because I was starting to pry up around the edges and it was just unclipping. I'm thinking to myself, what's going on here? And that is what was going on there. That was interesting. Hopefully I didn't kill it though. Also, we've got the power button just up close here. 
We can see that it is just red ever so slowly on the sides and then blue on the side and it's also textured as well and then it's just red going around there. So I just line up the screen on the frame and then I just click it back along. And here are all the snaps. There we go. Super easy screen replacement. Uh, one little contact fell off, but I'm sure that's fine. Let's go ahead and power this on and see if I killed it. I think I, yeah, no, I didn't kill it. I was going to say, I think I might have because I did kind of unclip the screen a bit aggressively, but no, I think it's all good. Maybe I killed the speaker. Maybe I didn't kill anything. Wait for it. Yay, another welcome phone lives on. I'll just put the back on, like so. It should just fit back on. There we go. And with this all being back together, I'm going to show the specifications for the $5 welcome device just here. Feel free to pause it if you need to, but I'm pretty sure everything in here is all correct. Uh, I haven't looked up any of the codes just yet, but hopefully I found out enough information about it all to have it all displayed here. But I think that is going to do it, everyone. That is the $5 welcome generic P30 Pro clone that I found at my flea market. It all still works, surprisingly, and uh, part of me really wanted this to be like a diamond in the rough sort of thing. Like, it feels premium. It's got a lot of weight to it, and I thought maybe this would be one of the more premium welcome devices, but unfortunately, it's not. It's just the usual. I've really got to buy another one off Wish or AliExpress or something like that to see if they have improved or if they're still using MT6580s in 2021. They were using MT6580s back in 2018 when I first reviewed a P30 Pro clone. Are they going to change? I have no idea. I'll have to order one and find out. As I said, if you've seen... Bye bye to you too. If you've seen this at your local flea market and they were asking $5 for it, would you purchase this just for the whole curiosity of it and for the whole sake of it? Feel free to let me know. But otherwise, thanks for coming along this journey with me of taking a look at the second P30 Pro clone on this channel. I hope you all enjoyed it for what it was. This was only just a quick video, nothing special, nothing too fancy or anything like that. Just thought I'd showcase what five bucks can get you at a flea market. And I can get you this. And the usual stuff, timestamps are in the description, so you can skip along to wherever you need to. If you've gotten bored at some point, you can just skip along and just see the specs, move on. That's all good. The system files are down in the description below as well. The spec applications that I use to test phones are also linked in the description below. I think that's it. If you've got any questions or anything like that about this device since it lives on, feel free to let me know. But otherwise, thanks so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. As I said, I hope you did all enjoy this for what it was, and hopefully you did get a laugh out of this video. As it's all just for entertainment. It's just a bit of fun. Nothing serious here. But anyways, everyone... Thanks so much for watching once again. I really do appreciate it. And as always, take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video. I will just clarify once again, they got the colours basically spot on. Good job, welcome. That's probably the only thing you got right on this device. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.